time, it's my very great pleasure to welcome our own beloved Reverend John to the podium, who I'm sure is going to give us a very entertaining and uplifting message. <laughs> Reverend John. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning, sons and daughters of the light. How are you? Oh, wonderful. In her book, Acts of Faith, Ayan Levan Zant recommends that the next time someone asks, how are you? Instead of the usual stock response, I'm good, you? You try this answer on for size. I'm whole, I'm complete, I'm perfect, I'm happy, I'm dynamite. I'm lovable, loving, getting lots of good love. I'm well off and doing well, I have it all together. I'm basking in the riches of life. I'm prospering right here and right now. I'm being richly rewarded, even in my sleep. I'm a miracle worker expecting a miracle right now. I'm peacefully peaceful. I'm walking the walk, I'm talking the talk. I'm claiming the victory right now. I'm successful, I'm wealthy. I'm living by pure grace. I'm a believer, I'm standing on faith. I'm on my way to the top. I'm what I am because I just can't help myself. And how are you, my dear? <laughs> So welcome to the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica on a cool January morning. If you are listening on the World Wide Web from somewhere where the temperatures are freezing, I know that this morning's encouragement will warm your heart. So welcome all. A friend shared with me a true story put out by an organization known as the Effective Club. And I want to share that story with you. A man sat in a metro station in Washington, DC, and started to play the violin. It was a cold January morning. He played six Bach pieces for about 45 minutes. During this time, it was rush hour. It was calculated that thousands of people, as you may well imagine, passed through the station, most of them on their way to work. Three minutes into his playing, a middle-aged man noticed that there was a musician playing. He slowed his pace and stopped for a few seconds and then hurried up to meet his schedule. A minute later, the violinist received his first dollar tip. A woman threw the money in the till and without stopping, continued to walk. A few minutes later, someone leaned against the wall to listen to him, but the man looked at his watch nervously and started to walk again. Clearly, he was late for work. The one who paid the most attention was a three-year-old boy. His mother tugged him along, but the kids stopped to look at the violinist and finally, the mother tugged so hard that the child continued to walk, turning his head all the time. You know how children do. All the parents that had children with them that morning, without exception, forced them to move on. In the 45 minutes that this musician played, only six people stopped and stayed for a while. About 20 passing gave him money, but continued to walk their normal pace. He collected the princely sum of $32. When he finished playing, the silence took over, and no one noticed it. No one applauded, nor was there any recognition. No one knew this, but the violinist was Joshua Bell, one of the best musicians in the world. He played one of the most intricate pieces ever written for the violin on an instrument worth 3.5 million US dollars. Two days before his playing in the subway, Joshua Bell sold out at a theater in Boston, and the seats at that performance averaged $100. This is a real story. 
Joshua Bell, playing incognito in the metro station, was organized by the Washington Post as part of a social experiment about perception, taste, and the priorities of people. The outlines of the experiment were, and I quote, in a commonplace environment at an inappropriate hour, do we perceive beauty. You ever pass, gone through your front door and there is one rose blooming? Carmen Clark sent me a picture of one rose at her front door. Do you ever just rush past it without even noticing? Oh my God, this flower has bloomed for me. Do you stop to appreciate all the, the beauty and the love and the blessings that God bestows upon you in so many different ways? Do we recognize talent in an unexpected context? You know, one of the possible conclusions from this experience could be, if we do not have a moment to stop and listen to one of the best musicians in the world playing the best music ever written, how many other things are we missing? How many other things are we missing? How many other things are you missing, my friends? When last have you paused to appreciate your home and those who share it with you. So my encouragement this morning is titled, The Power of Appreciation. You know, each time we express genuine appreciation, we expand our energy and our capacity to feel, to go into that heart space that's within where, where things really touch us. And you know, when we take time to appreciate we become more sensitive to the beauty of persons, animals, scenes, and presences around us. Appreciation truly enlarges and enriches our world. And even animals, did you know animals express gratitude? A female humpback whale had become entangled in a spider web of crab traps and lines. She was weighted down by hundreds of pounds of traps that caused her to struggle to even stay afloat. She also had hundreds of yards of line rope wrapped around her body, her tail, her torso, and a line tugging in her mouth. This is her story of giving gratitude. A fisherman spotted her just east of the Farallon Islands outside of the Golden Gate and he radioed for help. Within a few hours, the rescue team arrived and determined that she was so badly off, the only way to save her was to dive in and untangle her. A dangerous proposition indeed, since one slap of the tail could easily kill a rescuer. They worked for hours with curved knives and eventually freed her. When she was free, the divers say she swam in what seemed like joyous circles. She then came back to each and every diver, one at a time, nudged them, and pushed gently, thanking them. Some said it was the most incredibly beautiful experience of their entire lives. And the guy who cut the rope out of her mouth says her eye was following him all the time that he was doing this task. And he will never be the same again because her soul seemed to be looking into his, from her eyes to his. Have you ever looked somebody in the eye and just seemed to, to see them with your heart and your very soul and acknowledge that here is a brother and a sister? Isn't it just a wonderful experience? I know culturally sometimes we are taught not to, to eyeball people, you know, because you look faced, you look rude, you look, we used, it used to be called dumb insolence when I was at, 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 um, at high school. You couldn't look your, your headmaster in the eye. You had to lower your eyes respectfully and look at his shoes, which I used to have to clean. <laughs> but to appreciate really means to esteem highly. It also means to rise in value. So when we say to someone, I appreciate you, we really are see, saying your value has increased. Isn't that a lovely thing to say to somebody? Your value as a human being, your value as a God being, your value to me that share the planet with you has increased. Wow. 
You know, we pay more attention to the increase of our investments, don't we? than to the increase that people bring in our lives and in our affairs. Sometimes even the people that look after us, that clean our homes and that launder our clothes, we don't, we don't stop to think what a gift and to appreciate them, to raise them up and to love them in a way that acknowledges that here is a child of God helping another child of God to express all its goodness and all its, all its beauty and all its freedom. Your value has increased. Dr. Ernest Holmes, the founder of this great teaching we call the science of mind, said, and I quote, when we constructively praise and creatively bless, life abounds with love, peace, and joy, unquote. How true. Dr. Holmes explains it thus. Again, I quote, there is a law common to, common to all people which responds to every man's belief in life at the level of that belief. No man can be happy who lives in a continuous state of condemnation of people, conditions, and things. We must learn to praise and not condemn." Unquote. When I was studying human behavior at Johns Hopkins University many moons ago, one of my assignments was to counsel with a couple whose marriage was unraveling. They were actually friends of my professor and had agreed to be my guinea pigs. The husband, I suppose I think he's a little fellow from Jamaica, nobody will ever hear the gory details of our story. <laughs> the husband in, of this couple was a successful lawyer and he was a talented musician and she was a talented musician, a gourmet cook, and a model mother who kept a home that looked as though it had been lifted right out of a center spread in Home and Garden magazine. Neither of these wonderful people, when I interviewed them, felt that the other appreciated them. They were so busy being successful and perfect at what they did that they had become unavailable emotionally to each other. When I interviewed the husband, he couldn't recall when last he had expressed appreciation to his wife, apart from the obligatory Mother's Day and birthday and Christmas cards. The wife, who rarely made time for herself even, said dryly, I express my appreciation by doing everything for the man. What else does he want? This couple made a major breakthrough when they learned that appreciation means to share oneself and to let others in. You notice that when you're vexed with people, you lock them out? You, you know, I, I'm looking after myself. I, I'm not involved anymore with you. <laughs> Their marriage began to heal the moment they began to express appreciation for each other. And so this, what I had them do every time they sat down uh, to a meal together was to tell each other three things that they loved about each other when they first met and love was hot. You remember the, 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 that early flush of love? Anybody ever experienced it? When all you can see is, you know, the light radiating from his heart, and then after three years, all you can see is his dirty sneakers. Yeah. Because you see, friends, appreciation is a powerful tool for transformation. A client who calls me his touchy-feely consultant told me that his whole life changed when he began to realize that to be successful in his job was no longer as important as becoming sensitive to the needs of those with whom he worked. As he expressed greater interest in an empathy in and empathy and appreciation for his associates and staff, guess what happened? The atmosphere of the office changed. In the midst of the increasing warmth and caring he was learning to express, productivity automatically rose because work and appreciation had coalesced in a current of closer, more harmonious and loving and caring relationships. One man's receptivity to the power of appreciation opened the doors to a transformation at the workplace. And I want to share with you this morning that you can experience this dramatic change also if you start today to develop more appreciation in your daily living. And I have some uh, uh, four ways suggested by author Hal A. Lingerman in which you can do this.
First of all, Lingemann suggests that you become more interested in people for themselves. You notice that when people are introduce people, they say, this is John Scott, he's pastor of the Temple of Light. That's not who I am. This is John Scott, he's a lovely person. <laughs> but we always give the, the credentials, you know? This is Dr. So-and-so. That does frighten me. I want to know what you have in here. I want to know what, what touches your heart, you know? I don't care a lot about whom you are, except you're giving masses of money to the Temple of Light. <laughs> So seek to locate the hidden talent or dreams that a word of appreciation from you may awaken in someone. Look to appreciate people. I do a little experiment. Some mornings when I'm walking, I pass the street sweepers and I just say, I want to thank you so much for keeping the, the neighborhood so clean. They can't believe they've heard anything from a, a red man walking in the early morning. You know, they go, huh? What? I said, I just wanted to thank you for, for keeping the streets so clean. Wow. Secondly, Lingerman suggests that you develop more spontaneity by enjoying the process of contact with others, not just the results. You know, you meet people for something, to do something. Uh, can you just enjoy the energy that you exchange? Because, you know, whenever you interact with someone, your relationship is an exchange of energy from heart to heart, from soul to soul. Isn't it a shame that sometimes we pass people in the streets, people who might transform our lives forever if our eyes just made four? In Jamaica, when we, we look each other in the eye, we say, we I make four. When you I make four and you nod and say, one love or bless up or everything, Chris, you are indeed acknowledging that there's another person in your space. The Africans have a word for it, Ubuntu, which means you exist, you are. You know, you are on the planet and you make a difference. So enjoy and treasure the differences and the uniqueness of the people that you meet and praise and appreciate the diversity of God's creation. Third, expand and diversify your own interests. Even the most interesting and fascinating persons can become boring to themselves and others. Cultivate new areas of knowledge, sensitivity, and spiritual awakening in order to remain continuously expansive in consciousness. If you have been wanting to become more involved with your, with your, your church, stop saying, when I find the time. There is no time to find. Dr. Elma Lumsden, our founding minister, always says, my dear, we're already in eternity, so get involved. We will shortly be sharing our strategic plan with our entire community, and you will find many, many joyous opportunities to become involved in building on the foundation laid by Dr. Elmer as we seek together to strengthen our community while taking this teaching to the world, a world that I believe is truly thirsty for a better way. Do you think that we, the world is really ready for a better way, a way of being that acknowledges and honors the divinity in all human beings? And fourthly, pause frequently throughout your day and simply say, thank you, God, for this moment. Can we say that together? Thank you, God, for this moment. Do it often. Do it again. Thank you, God, for this moment. Do it and you'll feel the radiance of the God presence clearing your heart space and opening the eyes of your spirit so that you can see all the good that God has prepared for you from the very beginning. Lingerman recommends that you get yourself a hardcover notebook and begin keeping an appreciation journal. I know many of us already keep a gratitude journal. So let me share another idea for energizing the power of appreciation in your life. And I got this one from a, my good friend, Margarita Rain, who I think got it from Facebook. And I've started doing it, and it is great fun. You will enjoy this, too, if you are one of those folks who are resistant to keeping a journal. So you ready for the idea? Get yourself a large jar. This is going to be your gratitude jar. And you will keep a small pad and pen um, near it. 
And every time something wonderful happens to you, scribble it on the note paper and drop it in your gratitude jar. At the end of the year, say on New Year's Eve, you open your jar and you will see all the wonderful blessings that have been yours for the past year. For your gratitude jar, you can use a coffee bottle. Yeah, any old bottle. But I have a friend who does everything wholesale and whole scale, and he knows I like olives, so he brought me a bottle of olives. You know, bottles of olives are about this big. This friend gave me an olive jar. It took me a year to go through, and it has very interesting consequences for your, um, it, you know, olive oil. Anyway, <laughs> my gratitude jar is my olive jar because I'm expecting myriad blessings this year in my life. And of course, I love butterflies, so I have a butterfly on my jar. And I've placed on the, on the lid, thank you God for. And I christened it with a card I got from a, somebody I love very much who says, I'm simply divine, marvelous, delightful, magnificent, splendid, superb. Do you agree? <laughs> Can I hear yes? Ah, yes. uh, darn yes. Now, you might think, why would I put appreciation from somebody else into my gratitude jar? But I want to thank God for the friends who appreciate me, who raise me up, and who, like the whale in the story, sometimes untangle me from some really rotted problems. <laughs> so that went into my gratitude jar, along with a picture of my goddaughter, Yeshima. And thanks to God for this moment, like we said, uh, you, just, just remember to appreciate everything in your, in your midst. Your relationships, your job, your property and possessions. Give thanks too for the people who will help you get untangled. And you can even give thanks for your challenges and the lessons that they have taught you. And above all, regularly express your appreciation for the presence of God within your own awareness. Did I put that in? Yes, I did. Which brings me to your assignment. <laughs> Regulars at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica know that Reverend John always gives an assignment. And I thought I'd make it a really challenging one this week. <laughs> so here it is. Your assignment, should you decide to undertake it. All this week, I want you to abstain from finding fault or saying anything critical or negative to or about anyone. And that includes yourself. Sometimes have you noticed how we abuse ourselves? You know, we say the most amazingly put down things about ourselves. This week, abstain. If you catch yourself thinking something negative about someone, including yourself, look for something to appreciate in the person or situation and put it in your gratitude jar. Express that instead. And in addition, pause frequently throughout your day to say, thank you, God, for this moment. Can we say that? Thank you, God, for this moment. There's a lovely poem of appreciation for things Caribbean by a woman called Agnes Maxwell Hall. And it is from a book titled, Life Prayers from Around the World. I've shared it with you before, but I want to share it with you this morning. For honey, peppers, leaf green limes, pagan fruits whose names are rhymes, mangoes, breadfruit, ginger roots, granadillas, bamboo shoots, chocho, ackees, tangerines, lemons, purple congo beans, sugar, okras, cola nuts, citrons, hairy coconuts, fish, tobacco, native hats, gold bananas, woven mats, plantains, wild thyme, pallid leeks, pigeons with their scarlet beaks, oranges and saffron yams, baskets, ruby guava jams, turtles, goat skins, cinnamon, allspice, conch shells, golden rum, 
Blackskins, Babel, and the sun that burns all colors into one. We thank thee. My friends, as we continue to build our spiritual community, remember that you are a vital, appreciated, valuable, authentic, God-blessed, and prospered part of the great movement of truth in this land and throughout this region. By living the truth, you are helping to make our country and the world a place that works for everyone. Or rather, since I believe the world already works for everyone, what we are doing is raising our consciousness to this truth by practicing the power of appreciation. Let us say together, I love and appreciate myself. I love and appreciate myself. My presence on the planet is raising human consciousness. My presence on the planet is raising human consciousness. I am making a difference. I am making a To your neighbor say, I love and appreciate you. Your, pleasant on the, your presence on the planet is raising human consciousness. Thank you for making a difference. You want me to say it again for you? I love and appreciate you. I love and appreciate you. Your presence on the planet is raising human consciousness. Your presence on the planet is raising human consciousness. Thank you for making a difference. Thank you for making a difference. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, our founder, our beloved Dr. Elma Lumsden, your board of trustees, your ministers and practitioners, and your fellow congregants appreciate you raise you up. And above all, above all, God who giveth the increase appreciates you. In his grace and his fullness, may you live and prosper and progress forevermore. Namaste.